Well, when I went to work that summer, uh, I'd expected I was going to have a, you know, some do a little roping, a little branding, maybe treating a little foot rods, stuff like that. And uh, that isn't what happened to me. What happened to me was this. When I went to work that summer, I was just a city lad. They put me in the kitchen. It sort of made me mad. But I quit my grousing when they said that I'd be sleeping in the bunkhouse with the men. Now, Big Harvey had the back room, and in the front room there were two, three, irrigator most, the shambo, cowboy Aaron Dunn, and me. Sure, I heard some fancy snoring, but that's expected when you're sanctioned to be sleeping in the bunkhouse with the men. We had no running water, and our plumbing was a hole in a biffy, where in solitude you could contemplate your soul. You took your turn and waited if you had to go again. There weren't no room for sissies in the bunkhouse for the men. We went to bed in darkness in order to be certain that no one saw us stripping because the window had no curtain. Well, one night someone turned a light on, a real comedian. So we papered up the window, the window in the bunkhouse for the men. When it came to ladies, well, there are plenty to be found, for Duden is a business where romance just abounds. But you never saw a cowgirl or a dude equestrian and among the social visitors in the bunkhouse to the men. There wasn't many, any smoking, not many cuss words that got said. Aaron kept a Bible in the orange crate by his bed. I'd wait to find him reading with his flashlight well past 10, because night was a time for privacy in a bunkhouse for the men. For a city kid to mingle with hands that lived life of great was an adolescent privilege mighty hard to duplicate. If God would let me do it, well, I'd do it all again, and I'd make sure and I was sleeping in the bunkhouse with the, with the men. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaking it's harder to remember things, especially poems. Especially poems that you've written yourself because you, all those ghosts of what the lines that you wrote and didn't use, you know, they start floating back. And uh, anyway, this is a particular favorite anecdote and joke of mine about two guys who were talking. One of them says to the other, you know, we ate in a wonderful restaurant last night. His pal said, you did? What was the name of it? The fellow says, um, well, he says, what's that flower with a long stem and it has thorns on it, it's red? And uh, his friend says, Rose? The guy says, that's right. He says, Rose, where did we have dinner last night? <laughs> Cowboy walks into a bar, sits down, orders a beer, he looks around, there's nobody there. Him and the bartender, the place is empty. He's sitting there sipping that beer, and all of a sudden this little voice says, Nice hat. He says, looks, and he doesn't see anybody, and he thinks maybe he's hearing things, and he has a few more sips, and his voice says, What a beautiful shirt, beautiful shirt. He looks over there and he calls the bartender. He says, come over here, bartender. He says, I've been sitting here. He says, I'm hearing little voices. Tell me I got a beautiful hat, beautiful shirt. What's going on? The bartender says, oh, that's the peanuts. They're complimentary. <laughs> So with laughs, I've got to come tears, and I'm, I'm hobbling around uh, with a cane now in my old age. Uh, I come off a horse pretty good about 13 years ago in the, in the woods with logs and rocks, and I busted my hip and cracked my neck. And it was a, a major life-changing experience. Uh, I didn't get entirely well from it. 
but I am happy to say that the damn horse died a year later. <laughs> So I feel I got even with that. <laughs> but I generated this little, little verse. It's just a short one. Underneath the aspen tree, God reached down and spoke to me. It is not time for you to go. Stay down there and try to show by what you do and what you say that I am right to let you stay. Do good deeds, make amends, honor strangers and your friends. All of this I'd have you do. And so it was, God let me be there beneath that aspen tree. Thank you. Thank you.